Bilbo got up trembling. Where are you going? said Thorin. Uh, what about a little light? said Bilbo apologetically. We like the dark, said all the dwarves. Dark for dark business. There are many hours before dawn. Oh, of course, said Bilbo, and sat down in a hurry. He missed the stool and sat in the fender, knocking over the poker and the shovel with a crash. Will you be quiet, said Gandalf. Let Thorin speak. Gandalf, dwarves, and Mr. Baggins, we are met to discuss our plans, our ways, means, policy, and devices. We shall soon before the break of day start on our long journey, a journey from which some of us, or perhaps all of us, may never return. Poor Bilbo couldn't bear it any longer and may never return. He began to feel a shriek coming up inside, and very soon it burst out like the whistle of an engine coming out of a tunnel. He fell flat on the floor and kept calling out, Struck by lightning! Struck by lightning! And that was all they could get out of him for a very long time. So they took him and laid him on the drawing room sofa with a drink at his elbow and went back to their dark business. After a while, and a drink, Bilbo crept nervously to the door of the parlour. He heard Glowin talking about him. <laughs> One shriek like that in a moment of excitement would be enough to wake the dragon and all his relatives and kill the lot of us. I think it sounded more like fright than excitement. In fact, if it had not been for the sign on the door, I should have been sure we had come to the wrong house. He looks more like a grocer than a burglar. Many a time afterwards, Bilbo regretted what he did next. He walked right in and put his foot in it. Pardon me, he said. I don't pretend to understand what you're talking about or your reference to burglars, but I think I am right in believing that you think I am no good. Look, I have no signs on my door. It was painted a week ago, and I am quite sure that you have come to the wrong house. But tell me what you want done, and I will try it. If I have to walk from here to the east of east and fight the wild wereworms in the last desert, I had a great, great, great granduncle once, Bull Roarer Took, and... Yes, yes, but that was long ago, said Glowin. I was talking about you, and I assure you there is a mark on this door, the usual one in the trade. Burglar wants a good job, plenty of excitement and reasonable reward. Clear as day. Of course there is a mark, said Gandalf. I put it there myself, for very good reasons. You asked me to find the fourteenth man for your expedition, and I chose Mr. Baggins. Just let anyone say I chose the wrong man or the wrong house, and you can stop at thirteen and have all the bad luck you like, or go back to digging coal. Let's have no more argument. I have chosen Mr. Baggins, and that ought to be enough for all of you. If I say he is a burglar, a burglar he is, or will be when the time comes. Now, Bilbo, my boy, fetch the lamp and let's have a little light on this. On the table, in the light of a big lamp with a red shade, he spread a piece of parchment. This was made by Thor, your grandfather, Thorin. It is a plan of the mountain. I don't see that this will help us much, said Thorin. I remember the mountain well enough and the lands about it, and I know where Mirkwood is, and the withered heath where the great dragons bred. One point you haven't noticed, said the wizard, and that is the secret entrance. You see the rune on the west side and the hand pointing to it from the other runes? That marks a hidden passage to the lower halls. Oh, it may have been secret once, said Thorin. But how do we know that it is secret any longer? Old Smaug has lived there long enough now to find out anything there is to know about those caves. He may, but he can't have used it for years and years. Why? Because it is too small. Five feet high the door and three may walk abreast, say the runes. But Smaug could not creep into a hole that size, not even when he was a young dragon. Certainly not after devouring so many of the dwarves and men of Dale. It seems a great big hole to me. How could such a large door be kept secret from everybody outside apart from the dragon? In lots of ways, said Gandalf. From what it says on the map, I should guess there is a closed door which has been made to look exactly like the side of the mountain. 
Also with the map went a key, a small and curious key. Here it is. Keep it safe. Oh, this is news. Indeed I will, said Thorin. Now, so far we have no clear idea what to do. We thought of going east, as quiet and careful as we could, as far as the Long Lake. After that, the trouble would begin. A long time before that, if I know anything about the roads east, interrupted Gandalf. We might go from there up along the river running, said Thorin, taking no notice. And so to the ruins of Dale, the old town in the valley there, under the shadow of the mountain. But we none of us like the idea of the front gate. The river runs right out of it through the great cliff at the south of the mountain, and out of it comes the dragon, unless he has changed his habits. That would be no good, said the wizard, not without a mighty warrior, even a hero. I tried to find one, but heroes are scarce, not to be found. That is why I settled on burglary, especially when I remembered the existence of a side door. And here is our little Bilbo Baggins, chosen and selected burglar. So let's get on and make some plans. Very well then, said Thorin. Supposing the burglar expert gives us some ideas. <clears throat> well, first, I should like to know a bit more about things. I mean about the gold and the dragon and all that. Also, I should like to know about risks, out-of-pocket expenses, time required and remuneration and so forth. Very well, said Thorin. Long ago, in my grandfather Thror's time, our family was driven out of the far north and came back with all their wealth and tools to this mountain. It had been discovered by my ancestor, Thrain the Old. They mined and they tunneled and they made huger halls and greater workshops. And in addition, I believe they found a good deal of gold and a great many jewels, too. Anyway, they grew immensely rich and famous, and my grandfather was king under the mountain again. His halls became full of armor and jewels and carvings and cups. Undoubtedly, that was what brought the dragon. Dragons steal gold and jewels and guard their plunder as long as they live. There was a most specially greedy, strong and wicked dragon called Smaug. One day he flew into the air and came south. The first we heard of it was a noise like a hurricane coming from the north and the pine trees on the mountain creaking and cracking in the wind. Some of the dwarves who happened to be outside saw the dragon settle on our mountain in a spout of flame. He came down the slopes and when he reached the woods they all went up in flames. By that time all the bells were ringing in Dale and the warriors were arming. The dwarves rushed out of their great gate but there was the dragon waiting for them. None escaped that way. The river rushed up in steam and the fog fell on Dale and the dragon came and destroyed most of them. Then he crept back through the front gate and routed out the halls, lanes and tunnels, alleys, cellars, mansions and passages. After that there were no dwarves left alive inside and he took all their wealth for himself. He has piled it all up in a great heap far inside and sleeps on it for a bed. We mean to get it back and to bring our curses home to Smaug, if we can. I have often wondered about my father's escape and my grandfather's escape. I see now that they must have had a private side door which only they knew about, but apparently they made a map and I should like to know how Gandalf got hold of it. I did not get hold of it, I was given it, said the wizard. Your father gave me this to give to you. He could not remember his own name when he gave me the paper and he never told me yours, so on the whole I think I ought to be praised and thanked. Here it is. Hear, hear, thought Bilbo, and accidentally said it aloud. Hear, hear what? They all said, turning suddenly towards him, and he was so flustered that he answered, uh, hear what I have got to say. What's that? they asked. Uh, well, I should say that you ought to go east and have a look round. After all, there is a side door and dragons must sleep sometimes, I suppose. And, well, don't you know? I think we have talked long enough for one night. Uh, what about bed and an early start? 
I will give you a good breakfast before you go. Before we go, you mean, said Thorin. Aren't you the burglar? Isn't getting inside the door your job? One thing Bilbo did make up his mind about was not to bother to get up very early and cook everybody else's wretched breakfast. And he was not now quite so sure that he was going on any journey in the morning. As he lay in bed, he could hear Thorin still humming to himself in the best bedroom next to him. Far over the misty mountains cold, to dungeons deep and caverns old, we must away ere break of day to find our long-forgotten gold. Bilbo went to sleep with that in his ears, and it gave him very uncomfortable dreams. It was long after the break of day when he woke up. <laughs> 